the phrase I often use to explain my... Amen. Join me in Galatians chapter number 5. Galatians 5. I hope you are uh, growing and learning uh, the characteristics and what it means to be a good Christian. I pray that you are getting edification and getting a clean and clear understanding of how you can exhibit Christian character uh, in your daily life. Uh, that uh, God doesn't want us to just say we are Christians. He wants us to show it. He doesn't want us to just talk about being Christians uh, just because we go to church. Uh, but, but he wants us to live the Christian faith uh, so that people will see what it means to have Christ living not only in us, but living through us, Christ living through us. And there must be congruence, there must be continuity between our declarations and our actual life demonstrations. There should be uh, some consistency between the two. There should be absolute consistency. Now, that doesn't mean you're going to be a super, uh, a spiritual superhero every day, but you ought to be trying to be more of what Christ wants you to be every day. Amen. 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 So Galatians chapter number five, verse 16 says this, this I say then walk in the spirit and you shall not fulfill the lusts of the flesh for the flesh lusts against the spirit and the spirit against the flesh. And these are contrary one to the other so that you cannot do the things that you would. But if ye be led of the spirit, you are not under the law. Now the works of the flesh are manifest, which are these, adultery, fornication, uncleanness, lasciviousness, idolatry, witchcraft, hatred, variance, emulations, wrath, strife, seditions, heresies, envyings, murders, drunkenness, revelings, and such the like of the which I tell you before, as I have also told you in time past, that they which do such things shall not inherit the kingdom of God. But the fruit of the Spirit is this, and let's read verse 22 together. Ready, set, let's read. But the fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, long-suffering, gentleness, goodness, faith, meekness, temperance. Against such there is no law. And they that are of Christ have crucified the flesh with the afflictions of the lust. If we live in the spirit, let us walk also in the spirit. And let us not be desirous of vain glory, provoking one another, envying one another. Amen. The word of Tonight's God. lesson, my brothers and sisters, is out, uh, is lesson five, and it is out of... Uh, Galatians chapter 5 verse 22 we are going to learn tonight about gentleness or kindness gentleness or kindness as it would be translated in a modern translation kindness 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 is a quality of compassion or gentleness is a quality of compassion and generosity that's a characteristic of God's dealings towards the weak and the poor and it is demanded of believers kindness is also shown in the words of Jesus Christ you cannot leave out of the New Testament and not come out of the New Testament understanding that gentleness or kindness towards others is a hallmark or is a cornerstone of the Christian faith we should seek out and we should pray continually that God makes us better Christians, that ultimately he will make us more sensitive to the needs of others and will make us not superficially, but in our hearts kind towards other people. You cannot be a good Christian and you have no regard for other people and their feelings or well-being. You cannot exhibit the character of Christ and not have concern for your fellow human beings. When Jesus was asked the question, what, are the, what is the greatest commandment of all the law? He responded and said, the first and greatest commandment is that you love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, and with all your mind. But the second 
is like unto it. Love your neighbor as yourself. A kind and gentle spirit is a, is a prerequisite or is, is requisite to the Christian faith. Kindness is first of all demonstrated by God. Now understand these attributes that have been listed in Galatians chapter 5 verse 22 are all simply moral attributes that God is, but he wants us to show. God is love, but he wants us to show jo uh, love. Amen? God is our joy, but he wants us to exhibit and have joy. God is our peace. Amen? But he wants us to show peace. See, God is long-suffering. You see the difference? See, uh, these are um, attributes that are not something that God does. is who he is. God is long-suffering. He is long-suffering. He's not trying to be. He doesn't try to show it. God is long-suffering. Amen? And, but he wants us to demonstrate long-suffering. But then also God is gentleness. He is, he is a gentle and a kind God. And he wants us to show that. In, in, in the book of... Uh, in the book of Acts, in the book of Acts chapter 14, in the book of Acts chapter 14, let's go there together. In the book of Acts chapter, Acts 14. chapter 14, verse 16, who in time past suffered all nations to walk in their own ways. Nevertheless, he left not himself without witness in that he did good and gave us rain from heaven and fruitful seasons filling our hearts with food and gladness. God shows that he is a kind God. He gave kindness and love to all nations, not just some. Are you with me here? Let me give you the three points that I want you to take away from this lesson because some of you are uh, paused for a minute because you were just waiting on it. So there's the kindness of God. When you leave out of this lesson, you will understand the kindness of God, the kindness of God, the kindness of God. Then the next, you will see the kindness of Jesus Christ, the kindness of Jesus Christ, the kindness of Jesus Christ. And then finally, and then finally, you'll see the kindness by God's people. In Acts chapter 14, verse 16 and 17, uh, the, uh, Paul and Barnabas are preaching, and uh, they are, are teaching and express and share the fact that although uh, nations were walking in their own ways, God still showed kindness to all people, not just some. Now understand this, if God showed kindness to everybody without discrimination, then let me ask you this question, why do we discriminate uh, on those whom we show kindness to? What do you mean by that, Pastor? Many of us only show kindness to people whom we believe can do something for us. We are kind to those that we think have a little money. We are kind to those that we think have a little position or a little clout but yet we will treat poorly those that whom we do not believe can do anything for us. You see people that don't look like they got anything. You see people that don't look like uh, 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 they, they, you look or I look, and, and, and or, uh, they don't look like they come from our level of society. And so we just, we just have nasty words for them. We have flippant phrases for them. We, we have dismissive attitudes for them. And can I share something with you? That is not the Christian attitude. Furthermore, it's not even a sensible attitude because you never know the people that you're going to need one day. Same person that you think is nothing, the same person you think is nobody, the same person that you would overlook, you should be kind even to that person because that person might be the one that helps you far greater than anybody you ever thought of. Be kind to all. God was kind to all people. He was kind to all people. Not only to all people, but he was kind even to his people. He was kind even to his people. In Isaiah uh, chapter 54, uh, you see that God shows kindness to his people. Uh, the book of Isaiah is all about how Israel has gone into apostasy, how Israel has gone into sin, and yet God keeps on loving them. He keeps on showing kindness. He keeps on showing grace. I'm glad God is gentle with us. 
Amen. I'm glad God is gentle with me. But specifically, he was gentle and kind with the people of Israel. In Isaiah 54, verse uh, number uh, 8. Well, let me look at verse 6 for the context. For the Lord has called thee as a woman forsaken and grieved in spirit and a wife of youth when thou was refused, says thy God. For a small moment have I forsaken thee, but with great mercies will I gather thee. In a little wrath I hid my face from thee for a moment, but with everlasting kindness will I have mercy on thee says the Lord thy Redeemer. They had judgment up against them, but God said, I only let it last for a little while, but I've still shown kindness and love towards thee. Listen, God was merciful with the people of Israel for time after time. They turned their backs on God time after time. They did exact opposite of what God told them to do, but yet God still showed kindness to them even though they God didn't is hurt. also kind not only to all people, not only to his people, but God is kind to individuals as one well. One of the great types and one of the great metaphors of this, 2 Samuel chapter 9, verses 1 through 13. We don't have time to go there. 2 Samuel chapter 9, verse 1 through 13 is all about how Mephibosheth received kindness God through David. demonstrated kindness to Mephibosheth through David. When you read 2 Samuel chapter 9, verse 1 through 13, it's about uh, Saul's grandson, the son of Jonathan. Jonathan had befriended David during David's time uh, of closeness with his father Saul, and they had made a blood covenant with each other that they would always be brothers and that they would always, always love and care for each other. But after Saul seeks to kill David and is himself ultimately uh, uh, killed and after he ultimately dies, it is practiced that the king's family should absolutely be eradicated because if there's anybody left from the king's lineage, then they might rise up and try to overthrow the government or might try to overthrow the uh, current king. David asks, is there anyone left from Saul's house? And the story comes back to him that there is one left. For that faithful night when Saul dies, uh, Mephibosheth is just a little arm baby and his nurse takes him and runs away with him to a land that is called Lodibar. It's a place that is barren, dry, and without any life. But unfortunately, while she's running away with the child, she drops him and his ankles are broken and he's forever crippled from that time. And so David asks, is there anybody left from Saul's house? And they respond, yes, there's one named Mephibosheth. David sends for Mephibosheth and says, bring him to me. Now everybody believes that David is gonna kill him. He's gonna kill him because he has no uh, value or place in the kingdom. He's a crippled man that has nothing that he can offer David. He's a man that not only is, is, is crippled, but he's also of a bad lineage. He's from Saul's line. So they think that David is gonna execute him. But when they bring Mephibosheth to David, David says, give him a seat at the table. Give him as much to eat as he wants. Give him to much, as much to drink as he wants. Give him the best clothing to put on. Give him a chamber uh, in which he can live and he will forever live in my house. Now watch this. He should have been killed, but yet David is kind. He should have died, but yet David is kind. Can I share something with you? Mephibosheth is just like you and I. We should have been killed a long time ago. God should have cast us out a long time ago. We had nothing good to offer God. We had nothing of worth to offer God. But God said, no, I don't want him to die. I don't want her to die. Bring them a place at my table. Give that person a place of my bounty. I'll feed, I'll clothe, I'll give blessing galore that they don't deserve, but yet I'll do it because I'm kind. Can I ask you a question? Why are we always trying to do nice stuff for people that we think are going to do something nice for us? Because some of y'all mad right now that you gave somebody a Christmas present and they ain't gave you nothing yet. Hey! God you are is the phrase I often use to explain my gratitude and express my praise to you.